I just finished the Stellar Blade demo, and I'm going to say this now, this game's going to be great. The demo was a ton of fun, it looked great, it had wonderful music, an interesting world and lore, and there was enough intrigue in the story to get you excited for more. So let's talk about it. The setup. So what I can tell from this demo is that it starts you off at the beginning of the game, like the actual full blown game. There's also a message that tells you that your progress will transfer over once the full game is released, so that kind of further reinforces that this is the actual beginning of the game. But anyway, as you start, you see a bunch of command ships approaching Earth, which are seemingly getting ready for a conflict upon entering the atmosphere. A shield is deployed at the front of the ships, as missiles from Earth approach the ships, trying to take them down before they enter the atmosphere. Unfortunately for the ships, the missiles are designed in such a way that they scatter and bypass the shields, and they end up taking down most of the ships. As the ships are going Going down you see a bunch of pods being released from these ships that are now crashing down to the planet as all hell is breaking loose and missiles and projectiles are flying around them. As the pods are entering the atmosphere, the camera is fixated on one pod in particular and its turbulent journey down to the planet. And then all of a sudden, the pod gets hit and the projectile blows up. The camera then shifts to another pod, which is actually the pod that houses the main character, E. This little inversion here at the beginning is really cool and kind of sets the tone for the game as well. Through a little bit more descent, the pod lands onto the planet in a damaged state to where the main character Eve can't get the door open. Thankfully, her seemingly mentor and slash or friend, Taki, opens the door from the outside and lends Eve a hand and yanks her out of the pod. Eve then gets suited up and heads out to take on the battle directly in front of her. Here's where you gain access to Eve and the demo starts off properly. This introduction sequence is really cool and sets the stage for the game very well. Also, it doesn't hurt that it's an extremely good looking game and the art design is also wonderful. Just the whole set piece really looks magnificent and is very graphically impressive. Gameplay. Though this is absolutely more of an action RPG, this game resembles something more like Nier Automata or Devil May Cry, maybe a little bit of Dark Souls as well, but essentially you have a sword that can do a light attack and a strong attack, you can dodge and parry. The dodge isn't a Dark Souls dodge or an Elden Ring dodge, at least here in the demo anyway, but the block and parry is kind of like a Sekiro parry, meaning that when you block at the right time, aka a perfect parry, you build up one of your meters, which we'll talk about here in a second, and you also do a stagger build up on the enemy. But speaking of enemies, let's talk about those for a minute. For the demo, the enemies here are the Nativas, which are mutant-like creatures that kind of look somewhat scary and gross at the same time, almost demonic in a lot of ways. But even here in the demo, there's a lot of variety, and they all have significantly different move sets, weaknesses, and this kind of shows off how varied combat potentially could be and how the combat system functions with all these variations. For instance, again you have the two attacks, light and heavy, a dodge and a parry. Some enemies have fatal attacks that cannot be blocked and thus must be dodged. This attack has a visual cue, that way you know that this next attack will hit you unless you dodge it. Otherwise, for the most part, parrying is the more ideal way of dealing with most of the enemies, as this builds up their stagger and builds up one of your meters. However, there's also enemies that go invisible for a bit that require you to scan an area in order to locate them, and there's also some shield enemies that will block all attacks and that are only vulnerable for a short period of time after they attack. There's also more or less ranged enemies and close range enemies, and there's some enemies that expel gas to the immediate surrounding area after you hit them a certain amount of times. Again, this is a demo and this is a really small section of the game, but the variety shown here is really cool, and you can kind of extrapolate this to potentially the full game, thus insinuating that there might be a wide variety of different types of enemies. However, the variety wouldn't make much of a difference if the game wasn't challenging, but thankfully it is. This demo is about an hour to an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and I died probably eight to ten times during this period, partially because because I was trying to figure out what the combat system mechanics and timing were, but mostly due to the enemies being relatively difficult to defeat, especially the final boss in the demo. And I love this. This game isn't Elden Ring hard or anything like that, but it does get relatively close at times. For me, I think the difficulty that they have here in this demo is tuned pretty perfectly. And if the full game can keep this intact, I think the full playthrough is going to be very satisfying. But again, there is more, actually a lot more to Stellar Blade than just the action. It's also somewhat of an RPG. During the demo, you can view different skill trees for Eve and unlock different moves that further push the diversity of the combat system. You can't really unlock too much here yet, but you can see some of the unlocks that you can get in the full game, and they seem to be very promising. You can also upgrade weapons, outfits, you can get new weapons and new outfits. You can also upgrade your health in your BE meter that acquires energy from your parries and then also landing attacks on enemies, and allows you to perform special attacks that are very powerful. There's also a standard healing item and then accessory healing items that you can buy as backups, which is nice. There's some other stuff that you can get to that you can buy and use in battle. And really, I mean, there's there's a lot for this opening section, which is really great. But going back to the Elden Ring comparison for a second, there's also essentially a bonfire or grace system where you hit these checkpoints and then you rest there to regain your health and your healing items. It's kind of like a camp area. This is a little bit different from the bonfires. But as you progress, at these camp sections, you can buy items, you can level up, you can upgrade your weapons and your armor, and you can also just relax here and listen to music and even change the 
song that you're listening to at the camp. I really like when games do this because sometimes you just want or need to put down the controller for a second. And it's cool that this game lets you do it and then just relax with some really great music. Speaking of that, music and level design. The music for this demo is really wonderful. There's not a lot here because it's the demo, but what is here is very exceptional. When you're going through the level, there primarily be one track or seemingly one track, and it's a really nice soft vocal track that honestly is somewhat reminiscent of something like a near OST. And honestly, there's a lot of near comparisons that you can do here, which I'll bring up a little bit later in the video, but the primary track here is just wonderful. You also get a range of secondary tracks at the campsite, which I mentioned previously, and you can shuffle through them, and they all just sound very beautiful. There's also a different track for the very beginning, and a different track for the last boss fight. Again, surprise, both of which are excellent. I think the music for this game is going to be one of its main highlights, and I can't wait to hear more. As far as the level design goes, specifically for this demo, I'm very impressed. It's definitely linear, but I don't think that linearity is necessarily a bad thing. And who knows, maybe there's an open section when the full game comes out later on. We'll find out. But the level for the demo here has an open section on a beach, which takes place directly after you crash land Eve's pod, and where you begin to fight the Nativas before you're introduced into the actual main level of a post-apocalyptic inner city. The beach section here is fairly wide and kind of open, but it looks stunning. Again, most things in this demo look stunning, but the backgrounds here at the beach and like the textures and the environment are just really magnificent. But once you get into the city area, the look changes pretty significantly into this more post-apocalyptic theme where you have this inner city that's disheveled and beaten down by battle but this area also looks gorgeous just kind of in almost the opposite sense the city's broken dark and kind of ugly ugly in the sense of like design wise not graphically it looks great graphically and there's a lot of color which personally i love Again, the level's primarily linear, but there are some variations in traversal and some secret offshoots that have treasures in them that are worth exploring. For the traversal, in the demo at least, you have swinging sections where you have Eve swing from one pole to the next, and there's also a swimming section where you have to create a platform in order for Eve to climb on to get to a ladder. Eve can also dive and swim for seemingly an infinite amount of time, which will probably come into play later on in the full game, but this variation and different traversal is kind of neat. And finally, at the end of the level, you face off against the boss, which is very challenging. Up until this point, there hasn't been any real boss battles, so this is the first real boss. And I think it's done super well here. This really kind of felt like an Elder Ring boss fight in the best of ways. The boss had its own area essentially, had its own epic music, and had a pretty wide variety of attacks, and even had a second phase. It took me a handful of times, but I eventually bested it, and it felt very rewarding. Just like taking down an Elden Ring boss. It was a super fun way to end the demo. Some of the questionable things. Overall, this was a great demo, and I'm definitely playing the full game when it comes out. But there were a few things I'm definitely a bit wary about, but the demo wasn't enough time or a big enough section of the game to put these aspects into full display to determine whether they're going to be significant problems or not. But nonetheless, let's talk about them. One thing that I was initially worried about was the combat system as a whole. Again, this game is kind of a little bit of a mix of Nier Automata and Devil May Cry, and even a little bit of Dark Souls, which I think is a great combination. But initially, the combat felt very heavy and kind of clunky, like it was hard to dodge out of attacks, and parrying attacks was a little bit more difficult and not always effective. So it seemed like this might be a consistent problem, and I would just essentially be trading blows with enemies. However, as you get more skills unlocked, I started to see the combat come together, and I think that the combat system that they have here actually might be kind of a fairly unique unique one and pretty fun. And I think a big problem that I was having with the combat system was I was trying to play it like one of the three games that I just mentioned. And when I started to embrace that this may be its own type of combat system, it did feel a lot smoother and some of the clunkiness that I felt previously kind of became a little bit more smooth as I embraced the mechanics of the combat system. Again, going back to the relatively ineffective dodging system, thus making parrying the ideal way to deal with most enemies, the dodge really comes into play when you're introduced to the fatal attacks, where dodging is the only way to deal with them. So then the parrying and dodging mechanics kind of make more sense. And there's a few other mechanics that kind of play into this, but we won't talk about those here. So I think these mechanics and the whole system here will probably significantly expand in the full game. And at the moment, at least at the end of the demo, it seemed that all these systems interwoven together can make up a really great combat system. And seems to be relatively unique, or at least rare. At the end of the demo, it definitely was fun, and I'm hoping that when the full game launches, there'll be a variety of different systems that come together, and this combat system will turn out excellent. However, the healing system stayed pretty questionable throughout the demo. The main issue that I have with it here is the speed at which you use healing items, not necessarily the items that you use. Again, there's different types of healing items, but the main ones will be refillable ones, and you can restock them at the camp. And these are the ones I'm going to focus on. I think for the beginning of the game, there's definitely the right amount of healing items, which is three. For like any Dark Souls game, there's usually only three healable items to begin with. And I think that's very well balanced. I also think that they heal the appropriate amount of health at this section of the game as well. However, they take a long time to use. I found it very difficult to pop one of these off in the middle of a battle 
battle, which is where they'd be most useful. There may be upgrades later on that make them quicker to use, or there may be other healing items that are more advantageous or, you know, whatnot. And this may be intentionally designed in order to balance combat, which is something that I just can't see here in this little demo section. But continuously throughout the demo, it did feel like it was a bit too long, but we'll see how it integrates into the system when the full game comes out. And finally for this section, the story and voice acting. Both the story and voice acting thus far aren't bad, but they don't really seem to be great either. The lore and the world are extremely interesting and I'm very curious to see where this goes. But the voice lines and delivery weren't exceptional starting off, but they weren't really bad though. And again, it's a short snippet so I can't really tell what the full game's gonna be like. So I feel like this could go either way when the full game releases. Also, I think some of the sound effects, especially for the cutscenes, are either not necessarily balanced right or not done particularly well. So like sometimes I feel like I can barely hear them. Yet this is just the first level of the game, so hopefully this doesn't reflect the entirety of the game. Wrap up. At the end of the demo, there's a sizzle reel that shows you some of the later sections of the game and the story that displays a lot of the gameplay and story additions that are yet to come, which seems very vast and very, very cool. The sizzle reel really does a good job of getting you hyped for the full game. Not that I already wasn't. But again, pretty much everything about this game has got me hyped for the full release, and every bit of new gameplay or story just makes me that much more interested in the title. Thus far from the demo, the gameplay, the visuals, the music, the level design, and the art design have all been tremendous. This game reminds me a lot of Nier Automata with the gameplay and the story, the theme, and just kind of the vibes overall. And it seems to be close to the quality of Nier Automata 2, which is a good thing. I think that this game is either going to be a big hit or a cult classic if it doesn't sell too well initially. Thus far, everything seems to be pointing in the right direction for Stellar Blade, and I cannot wait to play a full game when it comes out. If you like the video and you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the bell notification, that way you don't miss out on any future videos. And leave a comment and tell me what you thought about the video or what you'd like to see me do next. If you want to see more videos on Stellar Blade, let me know in the comments and definitely hit the like button so I know to keep making more videos on it. Again, thank you for all the support. I appreciate each and every one of you and I love seeing what you think about the video or your opinions on the game in the comments. Also, if you want to help support the channel further, consider becoming a member and get some extra loyalty badges, emojis for comments, and a shout out in my next video. But until then, I wish you all the very very best and I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye!